Cool. Welcome to this week's show, the Crazy Gentleman Podcast. I'm your host, the Crazy Gentleman. Uh, this week's show is brought to you by Bear Knuckle Performance, BearKnucklePerformance.com. Home of all the highest quality American made parts for your Harley Davidson, FXRs, Dyna Sportsters, Baggers, Choppers, you name it. Paul's got it. Um, and you'll be hearing a lot more from Paul coming up soon. Uh, keep you posted on that. <laughs> And uh, Simbita underscore custom underscore knives on Instagram. Simbita custom knives dot com. Later, John. Uh, hit him up for all of the highest quality hunting, outdoor, and cutlery knives available, all handmade, one by one in Ohio. Uh, Lexan dash moto dot com. Hit up the code word crazy for checkout at fifteen percent off. And go get that fucking awesome audio inside your helmet. Uh, who else? Bumpshopbackroom.com. Bump Shop Diaries on Instagram. It's the only place to get your crazy gentleman merch right now. Go buy a shirt. I'm fucking broke. And hit up the Patreon also. I'm fucking broke. Come support me. I can't even fucking afford to go any further than Brooklyn right now. You motherfuckers gotta start paying. <laughs> and, uh, I think that's it, man. Also brought to you by, uh, John's new badass Dyna bike is fucking sick, dude. It's a pretty good one. It is. Um, I took it out yeah. for a ride today. Yeah. He put everything he can into it. It's fucking He's wild. made a ton of shit. A ton of shit. Swing arm, handlebars, rises, triple trees, exhaust bracket, fucking. The paint, obviously. Yeah, the, and they went with flames, you know? Yeah. He won't paint none of our bikes with flames. Wait, this is a Robert Pratke paint job. This is what? Robert Pratke. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that literally a fucking John not a flame guy? No, no. But a lot of our jobs that Robert would paint, you know, Robert would have a lot of bikes with flames. So right. since John paints in-house, he won't paint the way Robert would paint. Right. You know, no sense in stepping on toes or upsetting one another. Right. We love right. Robert, so it's like... But it's easy when, you know, if John feels like painting at midnight, he just paints. You know, if he feels like powder coating something, it's, we got our own oven, you know. Kind of made a little bit of everything here down to having these CNC machines. <clears throat> yeah, dude, last time I was here, there was not nearly as many CNCs. You guys are really stacking those fucking things we up. figured they look cute, they perform well. Let's see what we could do. Yeah. A lot of people are making things for motorcycles nowadays, and, and it's nice. Um, there's an awful lot of people. So uh, there's not a lot of people on the East Coast. Not that that really matters. You right. Know? But uh, kind of figure, got a few different ideas of things. So we were able to uh, pick ourselves up a couple of machines. John the painter is more than the painter. You know, he's self-taught in design whether it's graphics for a t-shirt or uh, CAD work for the CNC machines. Yeah. <clears throat> you know? Was that Dyna one of the prototype bikes when you guys started yeah. cutting parts? Just making all new shit, yeah. Yeah. And that's his personal bike, so. Mm -hmm. um, and the bike's a beast, so it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's insane, man. Paul made him a nice custom seat for that as well. Like I said before, you know, Paul Cox is the only guy that's doing any kind of we do stuff together, you know. John, John and Paul get along pretty good, and um, you know, so Paul can Paul can do just about anything yeah. as well. So they kind of work off each other <clears throat> nice, and you know, Paul makes some crazy shit, and when he wants a few things, you know, made that we can help him make, we make. Yeah. So, dude, I I really um, I sincerely think. Paul Cox is probably, I mean, he's got to be one of the best fucking craftsmen alive. Like, and like in terms of, the fucking guy can do so many different things mm -hmm. on the highest fucking level. Yeah, well, like, he'll spend like all night. Yes, it's crazy. He'll take a tongue lashing from his wife, <laughs> and he'll spend all night, and right, and then he'll pick flowers and give them to her in the morning. Like he's that guy. Right, right. You know, and he's been like that since I met him. Yeah, I met him around two thousand. He's a, you know, 
piece of work. He's, he's great. Yeah, I guess you have to dive that hard into what you're doing to yeah, get yeah. that result. But it's like that, like for him, he's 100% into his marriage. He's 100% into his daughter. Mm -hmm. So like uh, those two are fulfilled every way, every day possible. Right. And then it's like the trade. So if he don't know how to do it, he'll take his time and research and, you know, and he makes it happen. Yeah. And he's always been like that. Yeah, he start off a little pencil drawing. That, yeah, they look pretty neat. But the motherfucker can make it happen. And, you know, we really don't need your help. Right. You know? He he's is, kind of a one-stop shop, too, right? Like most He's of got a couple of good people in there. In-house-ish. Yeah. yeah. You oh, should I mean, go up and in, see in his place. Though. He probably won't let to. you in there. He'll tell you to fucking <laughs> take a hike. but I would love to. Man. You should, uh, you know... Try to get in there. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it my best. When you make enough money on T-shirts, you go up there with two dozen donuts from Peter Pan, <laughs> All right. and he'll let you get to the front door. All right. I'll put yeah, a good word in for you. That's a good, uh, good advice. Peter Pan Tell donuts. Him. Peter Pan donuts. He don't have that up Bobby. there. He don't have that way, kind of baby. shit. That's it. <laughs> it's it's gonna be perfect. I did recently meet one of the guys that works up there. Uh, you met him out in Ohio. Really Ash. talented kid. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. talented. Yeah. Was he from New Zealand or Australia or New something? New Zealand. Yep. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he said he's been Paul, with Paul, Paul for a long time. A lot of shit, man. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, no, and uh, what else do you want? That's great. Yeah. I mean, who else to learn from, you know? Yeah, no, it's good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I'd say the only difference between him and John, not the only difference, but a big difference is John got to dive more into CAD work. Gotcha. Yep. John can pencil draw, airbrush, paint, you know, build motorcycles, design, very much. But then he was, you know, we talked heavily about getting CNC machines. And, right. And then uh, next thing you know, buddy of mine, Richie Friendly, helped us out with getting them. And he owns a couple of great bars on the west side. And fucking next thing you know, CNC machines. John's sitting and designing, spending late nights. Got some crazy computer in his apartment. And he designs when he don't sleep. Crazy. It's pretty good. So what parts are you guys currently offering? Um, so he just actually designed some new floorboards. Um, they're going to go for, we picked up a new road glide just to have some change. You know, some people, more than some really, have asked us to make stuff for their road glides and their road kings and their... Um, whatever switchbacks all these other Harleys pretty much right. because they either can't afford or they don't want to like ride a bike like something like this a rigid bike they got bad back they got an issue something right I mean most people uh, don't have <clears throat> bikes like this anyway like well most don't you know? it's nice that a lot of people go out and either modify or build their bike right it's nice to see it you know, it's nice to be around some people like that. But I'm a fan of all the bikes, the road glides and all of them, and mm. um, sportsters and diners and all this new shit. So we just figured, what can we do a little different? So John actually come up with these new trees, um, new trees that you'd see. You take a look on one of the bikes that's on the lift and mm. or his new bike. Um, they're, it's beautiful. You know, headlight brackets. Then what he's doing for the, this particular road glide is new trees, new risers, new handlebars, new uh, floorboards, new air cleaner. <clears throat> a lot of little things that people can change. Instead of coming out and having a whole custom bike, a lot of people just want the logo on something. So right. we're just trying to offer like little pieces to be out there. Right. It's like people getting tattooed. A lot of people, like yourself, got right. question mark tattoos. Yeah. You know? Today's 19 years that Larry's been dead. 19 years in a row. Yeah. There's no, like, maybe. There's right. no nothing. It's 19 right. years. Yeah, that's a one-way ticket, man. That's a one-way ticket. There is no fucking taking a break from that one. So it's nice to hear people that like the fact that we're making little, kind of simple, some of them are neat parts. Right. And uh, the logo's on them. There's nothing big and gaudy and you know, for different style bikes. And then it's also nice to hear people cry and motherfuck, you know, taken away from <coughs> the style of what Larry had and how much he wouldn't have been for these kind of things right. in today's world, you know. But, uh, you know, sometimes I tell them to just come here and check it out. Come over here, run your mouth. It's great. We want to listen to you. 
And sometimes I send them pictures of Larry on a Road King. Right. That Timothy White took photos of him and Harrison Ford. Right. You know, it's not a stripped down bike, you know, situations. Right. But yeah, so we just want to make quality stuff. That's that's what it comes down to. We could be like a lot of the a lot of the companies that are bike shops in the country, just right. in America alone. They make a lot of stuff overseas. Right. We ain't against it. We just ain't for it. <clears throat> right. For right. us. We'd rather small and, you know, cost more, take longer. Like yeah, the Jeff I'm way Decker into method. It, man. I uh I was just on the phone last night with fucking bare knuckle paul and i told him even on this podcast like even if it's just the little fucking thing i can do i don't want to take on any sponsors that aren't making in america period yeah like i i don't need to name names we did on the phone you know last night but like i don't know man like the only thing i, I don't I, like I don't is the label switching either, a lot of know? label switching they take from one box put it in another box yeah there's put a little, an american flag on it and little it's, fuckery it's cute I think it's pretty neat. I but, think good for them. Right. If you right. don't do your homework, you'll never know. Right. So. Nah, man, I'm into the smaller shops that, like this place, like Paul's. Yeah. Get a machine or two, figure it out. Yeah, ain't nothing's you know, gonna be easy. You're chopping it's gonna your own take head time. off anyway. If you want to go overseas, you know, like eventually you'll fuck yourself. You yeah, know? yeah. But we don't dive deep into all of that. We just go. Right. You know what? We're from here. We want to stay here. Right. What can we do here? Right. It's very, very simple. We don't want to, uh, like, I don't dive into, I love Paul more than I love most of the people in the bike industry. Right. And with that, I'll say that I don't know how many fucking things Paul does, and I don't give a shit. Right. I go for Paul for his character and his character alone. That's it. Right. He makes some really neat shit. Um, we make some stuff that's similar, but the style is a little different. I don't go into him making a thousand parts, and I couldn't tell you how many fucking parts we make. Right. We make certain nuts and bolts that you can't buy, or maybe they have a little bit more flair to them, you know. But he is one of the few, you know. Alloyed Art, the California company. I met them when uh, they started out. Great guys, like you know. There's a handful of people, you know, that don't that make small, right. but make the best. You know, TPJ is another one. He's a sneaky little motherfucker <laughs> because he's like a little spot. And, yeah. You know, or a machine shop alone like Ryan Boyd. He's in Colorado. Right. That motherfucker's a badass, you know, like he really is a badass. And his quality and craftsmanship is, is 100% supreme. Yeah. You know, but he's a very overlooked guy because he's quiet. You know, he's not the kind of guy that'll take shit from anybody. And he believes in just making quality stuff. Yeah. And he's behind design and building, along with Garth Holland, with uh, Arch really? Motorcycles. Yeah, yeah. You know? They do a thing with another guy that, you know, invested money because his love of motorcycles was fantastic. Right. You know? But then he moved the shop back to Colorado because his family's there and it's a lot better place to watch his daughter grow up. And I mean, there's a bunch of people. A lot of good small shops and it's great. Yeah. But then there's some good big names I feel we have a big name. I don't think we do big name stuff, though. I think uh, our choices are a little bit more selective. We'd prefer to stay at a nice, you know, kind of nice vibe. We got a good vibe together. We got a fantastic team. We don't want to take shit. We don't want to give shit. Simple. A couple of motorcycles every now and then. A little bit of parts. Making frames in-house, you know. That'd probably make a few people cry if you just had a, an Indian Larry shirt that just said Indian Larry Motorcycles, good vibes. Good vibes. <laughs> I could be like yeah. some of them, you know, they, they make some nice t-shirts and, yeah. you know, they say they build motorcycles, they do stuff, but they just sell coffee. Right. And that's nice, but you're, you're misleading. You ever, you ever consider selling coffee? I know you're kind of a connoisseur. I, I wish we sold coffee, but we've yeah. never had that opportunity. Yeah. You know, I'd rather spend my money uh, going out to dinner and fucking hanging out on the beach. Favorite place in New York City to eat? Oh, there's a few, but one of the best places is Raul's. Raul's is in Soho. Okay. And that's a favorite that I'll go with my daughter. What, Italian place? French like? place, greatest, some of the greatest steak in the, in the ever. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our go-to. Yeah. Do you, I, I feel like... Uh, the more traveling I do, New York gets overlooked as one of the greatest food cities in the world <clears throat> well, by a lot of people who don't know. 
Yeah, well, fuck those people. I think it's the greatest food city in the world. It is. No, nah, by far it is. Even as much as it, the city's going down the tubes. Right, right. Um, I tell people, look, there's beautiful people walking in the street. I don't know, if you're into guys, you're going to see some studs. <laughs> if you're into women, I prefer looking at women myself. Right. You're going to see the beautiful array of every shade, every size of a woman going. Right. And it goes across the board with food. Yeah, yeah. The restaurants and the small little fucking sandwich places, they're just unbelievable. And it's sad that there's, with the breakdown of everybody in the last couple of years, and the unfortunate side of business that some of these small mom and pop spots had gone out of business. Right. And just in the boroughs, I'll say. Because in all five boroughs, there's been a handful of really good old places. But on the flip side, there's an awful lot of new places. Right. From sandwich spots to sit down, delicious, you know, five star. It's incredible. Yeah. Now, like, look, I don't party. So it's like, what am I going to spend my money on? Yeah. I get massages. I go to, I find the best. I, you know, I fucking rub my body down. It's the, it's the greatest. Yeah. And uh, I spend my money on food. Dude, I spend my money on both of those things since I quit drinking, too. Yeah. It's the fucking greatest. Yeah, yeah. Listen, even if you're drinking, I, I myself don't like drinking. Right. It's not healthy for me or you. And yeah. I figure that what's going to be the best thing? Mm-hmm. I'm going to drink a lot of seltzer and espresso, and I'm going to eat and try anything and everything that's imaginable. Yeah. You big dessert guy? I'm an eater, man. Like yeah. dessert's just like a bonus. It's yeah. It's just another level on the plate of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking sucker. I can't get dinner without dessert. <clears throat> oh, naturally, dessert comes after dinner. <laughs> right, right. No, I don't. I never skip it though. Oh no, never no, skip no, dessert. There shouldn't be. No, no, that shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you should clear your plate. Right, right. You know. Yeah, never getting anything to go. No, I no, can't no. control myself. It's, it's not. in front of me. It's. I'll on. get an extra steak, and it's only because of the dog. Oh, I yeah. need my dog Buster to have something good. <laughs> we sleep together, we might as well have the same kind of food. You know, if, if he's farting, I'm farting. Yeah. Dude, speaking of that, listener question. When is Bobby Seeger available for marriage? That won't happen, man. One marriage was plenty. Okay. And I did, uh, I feel I put my two feet in yep. and did everything imaginable. Okay. But due to the fact that, you know, you, as you get older, you realize the, you, the differences. And in my circumstance, in Elisa's circumstance, I can probably say for the both of us that having two kids and one of them dying it puts a tremendous strain on your mental outlook on life overall. So, you know, where you think you'd come together even tighter, you do under certain circumstances. But then it's like, you know, if one does a little bit better mentally and is able to get out and accept it, that's good for that one person. It's not good for both. Right. You know, so the majority of people that have a situation like that, um, unfortunately, a lot of them kill themselves. There's suicides in that. And I don't believe she's interested in suicide. Um, I'm not. I have too much of a good time every day, you know. But as far as me ever getting married, I find that even um, like super slim. Gotcha. Like super, I don't see me having a girlfriend, you know. Hi hypothetical. Bring huh. it, bring it on, <laughs> bring it on. This is all listener questions here, by the yeah, way. I'm ready for it. Hypothetically, where on the list is Jody Parowitz? <clears throat> Jody of Parowitz. I love of Jody. <laughs> I love Jody Parowitz. But uh, like I tell her, I wouldn't marry her. No, she's a wild card. No way. No. Um, I wouldn't marry or get down with anybody in the motorcycle industry either. Yeah. 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 Hang out. That's go one swimming. Of the new rules Fantastic. I have. Hang out. Yeah. Go to the beach. Yeah. Uh, ride around a little bit. Go to dinner, any of that, yeah. all good shit. Yeah. But man, I I am not interested in a girlfriend. So. Yeah. You know, to get even to clown about marriage, you yeah. know, and she's always talking shit. Yeah, she's yeah. telling people we're getting married, or she's married to me already. I don't know how she originally came up with that, but it's a good line of shit. You know, I give it up to her for that. Yeah, yeah. You know. <clears throat> um. Yeah, last time I Besides, saw her. Besides, her father would be super happy if I never <laughs> married her. Right. Super, right. super happy. Right. That's a good excuse. I would, but I don't want to piss your dad off. Oh, I wouldn't <laughs> care about pissing a dad off. I mean, her dad, a, he's a character in his own right. Right. You know? right. And uh, I'm not saying anything bad. I love, I love Dave. There's something yeah. about him. I've always had a, a love for Dave. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I care about my feelings. Right. I don't right. care about yours or anybody else's. Well, dude, you always have to be number one. 
I'm not even in the category of numbers. Right. I am me. That's right, it. Right, right. It's the same that goes for my daughter. It's like my daughter's not on the shelf of, oh, she comes first because she's my daughter. Right. Nah, man, she's not even in that box. Right. You know, if you can't accept it, the fact that, you know, she's on my shoulders. Right. There's no game playing. There's no like, oh, maybe. That doesn't play into life for me. And I'm confused how it plays into life for people that are married or single. Right. You know what I mean? When it comes to kids, I don't do that. You know, it's like in the bike industry, people say, hey, how do you feel about, like, Bare Knuckle Paul? Or how do you feel about, you know, Billy Lane or any of these guys? I go, oh, they're just good people. Right. Well, where do you see yourself in that? I go, fuck, man, we're the best. Right. That's it. There's no, like, one, two, three in my eyes. We rule. Right. And fuck, man, if, <clears throat> I got a friendship with everybody. And if we don't happen to be able to cater to you the way you'd like, well, man, I'm going to turn you on to them. I'm not going to ignore them. Right. I'm going to give you their number. And tell you, hey, you should go check these guys out. Because maybe Paul will cater to you a little bit better. Maybe he has more to offer than we have to offer. Right. We kind of go at our own pace. You know, and it's unfortunate for some that they come here, they expect this. But when they say they want this and it starts getting in motion, they want to change it. Right. And then they want to put the Billy Lane handlebars on. Or right. they want to put the Billy Lane gas tank on. And now you just go, that's not in our fucking wheelhouse. You know, here's their phone number. Right, here's your money. Right. Go get them to do that shit. That's what they're known for. This is the style of what we like. Right. So we're trying to stay, not to be like a copy what was done previous, 100%. We got to do a little bit. But really, we want functioning. We want our style. That's why there's different styles. Correct. Yeah, it's yeah, very, you very expect, simple. You can't expect one artist <clears throat> or any particular manufacturer to just water, but a lot of people water want down to. their product. Just and that's okay. They could do know, it. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Right, right. You know, we use a little bit of Paul's stuff, and we love it. Right. You know, but when you have four CNC machines and a guy that's a fucking nut job right. that could design stuff, right. or maybe he sees something and then he designs it, or maybe he just comes up, he's got a fucking catalog of parts that we don't have enough machines to make. Right. So it's only time. And I'm talking just fucking Harleys and custom parts, you know? Forget about the rest of these other bikes that we want to do shit for right. that he comes up with. Pretty neat shit. But there's no reason to come up with it and give it away. No. Well, good things take time. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you can't just whip out everything you want overnight. No, yeah. no. And who's going to do that? Who wants to lay out the money for that? Right. We don't. Right. You know, we're a team in here. This is a, <clears throat> this is a, a pretty good company, a pretty good company team. Right. You know, we don't want to play games. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty much like, I guess, basically from here on out, because uh, like tomorrow is September. Or no, two days from now two is more days. September. Uh, it's, it's a pretty big team effort to get the block party ready. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. I try to avoid as much as possible <laughs> because nobody's going to want me to change anything. And, right. You know, I don't want to be a, a fucking bump in the road to the level of excitement that is brought. Because um, I can do that. Would you, uh, would you say anything to entice people to get here for this one besides it being the last one? Nah. They like, can miss it. They can look at pictures <laughs> online. I don't give a fuck. Right, right. You know, you're going to come or you're not going to come. Yeah. Right, right. That's it. It's it's a very, very simple. Right. Very simple program. Complicated people. You know, I life that, is easy. I say that about everything I do. Mm. I don't really go crazy. Oh, man, you got to get there. Like, dude, I'll be there having a good time. Mm -hmm. If you ain't there, it's your fucking loss. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, I tell people, listen, just make sure you buy your little wristbands and your fucking whatever right. else you want. Right. I'm not going to be standing around giving out shit. I'm not doing nothing. <clears throat> I'm going to work on getting a little ice cart and fucking sell dollar ices out in the street. Right. Take the sun all day. Talk right. shit. You know, number 20. Tw number 20 in a row. Right. We didn't stop for anybody uh, having meltdowns in the street. And our parties were fantastic over the last couple of years. And that's a no. huge run, too. I can't think of another event besides the big rallies that have gone 20 years. Yeah, but those are that's watered down. pretty impressive. Our party is a party. Our party's a street party. Our party's got real people. Yeah. You know, if the city of New York was a little bit more fantastic, maybe we would have more bells and whistles. <laughs> but we don't. Because right, we don't right. have that kind of a city. You Dude. know, the, the local precinct is fantastic. Community service is fantastic. The, everybody's been fucking great. Right. Because we don't play games. There's no extra bullshit. 
There's nobody, uh, no fighting, no crying, no wrecking, no stealing bikes. There's none of that goes on. Right. You know, none of us will tolerate the shit. And that's good as a group, as a group as a whole. Right, right. You know? But I think that 20 years is, well, 20 parties in 19 years is fantastic. Right. It's a huge so, run. It's great. Yeah. Why not end at 20? Oh, people want to cry like they're doing something to help fucking put it on. No, Are they getting man. an ice truck? Are they getting fucking... Right. You know this or that. We don't have sponsors. Like we don't that, have real sponsors. That should be your. Next I tell you shirt. what. I can use fucking twenty grand to help pay for all the little things. Yeah. You know, and we don't get much money. Right. If we're lucky to break even, we we get a little bit more. We put it towards the Aiden Jack Foundation. Right. Very very simple. You know. Right, and I would assume too, uh, <laughs> if you come here or ahead of time, you're open for donations regardless. Anytime. Yeah, of course. To Aiden's Foundation. Yeah, yeah, it's a non-pay fucking job for my lovely ex-wife and uh, another lady that's in it. Okay. So they're lobbying all the time. Any of the money that we make on the road really doesn't go nowhere but into paperwork. Right. Or we make more shirts and more shirts somehow get more awareness because somebody's wearing it when they're in the deli or a supermarket or right. they're out at a bike rally and it says Aiden has a posse. You know, it's pretty neat. You know, and like I said... The bike shop donates, the, you know, we pay for the shirts to get uh, bought and screen printed and, you know, um, this year, I mean, in the past, we've had different graffiti writers, you know, paint or do artwork. Mm -hmm. um, this year is a, another Brooklyn native named Peter Paid. He lives out mm -hmm. in Bay Ridge. Great guy, you know. Fantastic. Is he going to do any art before the block party here? Like, mm -hmm. I know you got the walls off. He might be painting a helmet. So I really don't here. know. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if he'll paint in the back wall or not. Yeah. It's too far away. Even though it's, you know, 17, 18 days away. Dude, speaking of that, uh, I didn't know until I fucking woke up this morning uh, and saw on Billy Lane's uh, Instagram, this is Larry's anniversary, his death today. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that when you told me to come here on Wednesday? No. Because we planned this like, you know. I don't know, a few days ago. I didn't remember until I, you texted me about coming over that you were coming over. No shit. No shit. I didn't know if like you had said today for that I reason. I kind of say yes to everything. Right, right. And if I'm standing there, I'm standing there. But this guy alive just said, hey, can you help me? My bike broke down. So right. I said, all right. In lieu of taking a nice uh, cold shower, I'm going to go pick up a guy named Elijah's bike and grab two slices of pizza, some garlic knots, and come back here. Yo, best pizza place in New York. Oh, the industry. It's okay. the best. Okay. okay. There's a bunch of good ones, but uh, their fucking pizza's delicious and their sandwiches is crusher. Okay. Nick and Massimo, fantastic. They bake the bread in the morning, the fucking sandwiches are there at lunchtime. Incredible. Okay. Like, really. Yeah. Yeah. This is just all good block party advice for the out of towners. The out of towners better get online because these fucking places are gonna be just jammed. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people like going to Five Leaves around the block. You know, the food's always good. It's clean. Right. You know, you just got to wait. That's the only downside. That's, um, that's the place you sent me to last time, right? For breakfast? I think so. Five leaves? Five right leaves. Right next to Forma. The pancakes. Oh, Forma's the other killer, right? Yeah, the pasta yeah. is the shit. Yeah. Both places. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been there four and a half years now. That's a regular spot to have uh, lunch or dinner. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, that place is killer, man. And there's a lot of good, a lot of good places. There's a lot of overhyped places as well, but... Dude, you know what I wanted to ask you about? I saw on your Instagram you were at fucking Nobu about a week ago. Oh, yeah, the other night. Dude, that's on my list. I've never been there. Oh, delicious. Um, I go, it? That's do and uh, my buddy Alberto, he works for Cipriani in the city. Yeah. And uh, his daughter and his wife were in from Italy. Okay. So they'd love to be American citizens. Yeah. So they yeah. came for a couple of months and uh, I took them out to Nobu. I figured, fuck Yeah, it. that's the place, dude. I asked my lawyer to go, but... She said no. <laughs> it was a tough one. I tried. <coughs> yeah, that's definitely on my list. Yeah, it's a good one. But I would say bring your card. Yeah. Bring your card or bring a wad of cash because before you know it, yeah, it's a you know, you're having day. Wagyu fucking dumplings, Wagyu tacos, tuna yeah. tatar, tuna tacos, spicy tuna. Yeah. And then fucking sashimi. Like, uh, yeah. It's good. Okay, what are the specials? Fuck, just bring the specials. Right, right. Yeah. 
Are you the expensive. kind of guy when you go to the higher end places like that where you kind of just do a whole nah, ta- I, table sample? No, fuck no. Little I gear. treat these places all the same. Right. right. You know, some places, uh, if I feel like wearing a nice button shirt, then fuck, I wear a nice button shirt and I go eat pizza. Right. You know, uh, I usually don't oh, care. Oh, no, I mean like you sample the whole menu. Nah, Like nah, you just nah. order a whole bunch of shit. I'll just go in and sometimes the, samp- the um, specials sound good. Okay. And then I go, fuck, I'll take, uh, give me one of those and one of those. And yeah. That's it. I'm kind of the same way. I always try to order the special because <clears throat> I look at it as something you might not ever eat again. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, yeah. you know, like, why not? Why the I'll fuck do that I more order? when I'm traveling. Yeah, yeah, same. That's a Even locally, though. Like, why the fuck am I going to order a chicken parm when I can fucking order something that I've never even seen before? Yeah. You know? I've cut down having double dinners. What do you mean by that? Two uh, entrees. I'd have, like, yeah, Two like, I go to the palm when I go out to Montauk, and I'll get, like, uh, just simple stuff. Chicken palm sandwich and a, and a burger, because the burgers are good. Right, Or right. I'll get myself a nice steak and a chicken palm. Right. You know, now I reel it in. I'll just have the steak. Uh-huh. Or, uh, you know, I won't go to Forma and have two plates of pasta right. and three appetizers. I'll just have, have one appetizer. two plates last time we were there. I probably did. did. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> food's good. Yeah. I can eat. Like, that's the thing. So instead of just eating so much, I'm like, ah, I'll fucking slow down a little bit on eating. Right. Everybody seems to be getting sick. I haven't been sick in years. You know. Is that as far as you go for a diet plan? It's just cut down on the portion? That's all I've ever done. I'm like, right. there's no reason to, I'm going to portion my meals any further. Right. I'm just not going to eat fucking a heavy excess of it. You know, right. you have three appetizers and two main meals. That's a lot. Right. You know, and usually it's uh, something like I want to sample it. So then I'm getting the whole plate. They're not going to give you a fucking sample. <laughs> hey, let me get that steak uh, medium well. Okay. Then it comes out and no, I want, you know, then I right. buy the whole thing and. I go, listen, it's going to be fine. <laughs> if you were on a fucking desert island and you can only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what's the fucking magic dish? A female. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. And as an appetizer, I'd fish. I'd fucking throw a string out and I'd catch myself just some to fluke. prep, Just to prep for the entree. Yeah, prep for the entree. It would be a female. Come on, get it together. Oh, that's the fucking best answer you could have given. <laughs> that's my that's my only one. <laughs> oh my god. Come yeah. on, what else you got? Do you have um do you have like a like a one particular favorite memory from the block parties over the years? Nope. Like anything I couldn't tell you a favorite memory head. from last week. Right, right. You know? I look at every day as a new day and right. let's see if I can make it to the end of the day and actually lay down on my back. Right. When, when Larry was alive, was it a, um, a dream or a vision of his to have, like, his own bike event? Whether it be this no, block no, no, party the, or... Listen, the block party... Did he about anything like that? No, fuck no. The block party, nobody wanted to have the block party. Uh-huh. Not him, not Paul, not at least. Nobody wanted it. Right. Because it was too much of a, I believe, more of an undertaking. Yeah. Like, how's that going to happen man. when a there's a couple of people? But, um... I started making up invites on with choppy markers and cardboard, and before you know it, a bunch of people came. When he was still alive. Yeah, yeah. Really? So that was our first block party. Oh wow. That was, I believe, in June of 2004. Okay. That's why this is 20 and his death is 19. Because oh. when he died, so the block party ended up being pretty good. The police came. This guy out in Jersey that I I wish I could remember his name, had a jet truck, like a jet ice cream truck, I, I believe. So a jet engine, and he melted the street, North 14th Street, because we were right around yeah, the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the fire department came, police came. It was great. It was great. So then that was that was the first block party, and it was fantastic. And then we we did a rotisserie pig in the street. This guy Mike Davis came up from Virginia. He barbecued for us. It was nice. Um, I think my cousin Patrick was working for Budweiser or Coors or something. Got us like um, maybe a dozen kegs of beer. Went through it all. It was a good party. Then when Larry died, and we can't, we were all down in uh, the Carolinas when he died. So when we came back up, it was, uh, what are we gonna do? So I just thought, 
we should have a big street party because people are going to come from all over. I didn't know that it would be as big as it was, which I'd say maybe Mike Lichter's photos, somebody's, I believe his photos were like captured a lot of the playing field. Right. And so with that, it was pretty wild, you know. Um, and then I just thought, wow, it was so good, you know. Again, now Elisa and myself preferred to stay in the background. So like you won't see us getting on stage or doing any of that corny shit because we weren't interested in that. We right. were more interested in, you know, how do you mourn somebody that, you know, you love, they die. And then, uh, and at the time of the second block party, his, his death, uh, my mother-in-law had died. So like it was just like a wild, I think it was pretty much like that. It's a wild. Anyway. Um, that's what spun the block parties being into September. Right. And then it was like, um, you know what? We'll do it the third Saturday of September. Nobody else was doing anything in September. And then uh, it was good. That's all we wanted to do was have a party for Larry. And then <clears throat> we would donate money to Sloan Kettering to the kids department. Mm -hmm. We did that for a couple of years. And then uh, our boy Aiden got sick. And then it went to that. Then Elisa started a foundation. Then it was like, okay, fuck it. Whatever money gets raised, she's got the legit 501c3, you know, <coughs> do all the right things. Right. Kind of so then we do that. So it's the greatest city. We're in the fucking greatest place. You know, they're watering it down tremendously um, in, in every way possible. And it's, it's a bummer. Right. But um, I got zero play in any of that. They don't want to listen to a guy like me. I don't get invited to those kind of parties to say, hey, we're going to close off this block and we're going to green this block. They just do whatever they want. Right, right. You know, as a straight male in New York City, it's, I'm not saying it's tough for me because I live a great life. I'm living every day as it's my last. Right. But it's, it's a wash. Yeah. So... And who knows, like I said, 20 block parties, I think they've been fantastic. We've had a few hiccups. Those hiccups got squashed, all good over the years. Everybody pretty much plays well together. You know, we don't want problems. Most of the people don't want problems. So it works out nice. A lot of nice bikes come out, you know. Uh, did you wind up getting a wall of death this year? No, I no. Know you know, it was a one year thing. I wish, yeah, no. Well, Rhett was supposed to come for three years. And, and he backed oh. out of that. So that's on him. I, got I still it. love Rhett. Okay. But handshakes are bigger in my eyes than Rhett Rotten's eyes. Apparently. Yeah. But the Ives brothers were badass. And I wish the fucking, I wish the Ives brothers, uh, I wish I talked to them earlier. Because they'd like to come. Yeah. But you know, for us, we're going to stick to a uh, simple party. Number 20. That's it. I had the Ives brothers come and I worked it out and money and all of that work. Um, the interest in my eyes was to put them in Times Square for like three days with the Hard Rock Cafe because I believe that that could have happened. Right. And then it would have drew more for the Hard Rock, the Ives brothers, and for us. Yeah. Because other than Rhett Rotten, I don't know of any other time a wall of death had been in the boroughs. Right. Some people want to say that there was a wall of death in the 20s, but there's no record of it it's just talk right. bullshit you know yeah dude i remember like uh what was it a month or two ago when you had said that idea man i uh i've thought it forever like it's come up all oh, the block party you going or whatever man i can't tell you how many people i was thinking in the back of my head god damn i hope bobby pulls that wall of death off in times square yeah that no it would have been fuck his mind, dude. it would have been the shit yeah but it's one of those things like do i want to fucking put Put what money I'll allocate towards the party. Right. Do I, my daughter's going to be going to college next year. Right. You know, I got to think of those things. Pay for yeah. these machines and try to come up with some, you know, R&D department that we have, like some, you know, extra material for some right. of the stuff. Dude, that would have been the fucking greatest hood rich thing to ever say is my daughter didn't go to college because I put a fucking wall of death in Times Square. <laughs> That would be it. That would be it. Yeah, yeah. Thank God I'm just a guy and not a hood rich guy. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, who knows? 
We won't do block parties anymore. I don't think. Right, right. I don't think that'll happen. I don't nah, really dude, give I a think fuck it's about fucking doing perfect. It. Like, just send it off with 20 mm. and... Well, next year, Larry you know. will be dead 20 years. Right. And if I'm still alive and we're still open, we'll probably have something in the expo center. Okay. So. Just not the big block party thing. Nah, not a block party thing. It'll be an indoors... Yeah. You know, um, maybe. Maybe like... Uh, Everybody else would winter. like to have a block party. Right, right. You know, but... But and they could. A, they can have it. Right, I'll right. come and hang out. Right. You know, it's not a me party. It's it's a we party. Right. You know what I mean? But since I kind of have a good say, I would say that this would probably be the last. Right, right. Yeah. I'd say you're the guy to ask that question. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I remember something I asked you... I don't even know. It's probably pretty irrelevant. Any any crazy out of towners that you know that'll be here that maybe Oh, well, Peter Guns is coming with a couple of beautiful little Japanese boys. Okay. They're fucking and they're fantastic. I know right. one out of the two, so right. And their craftsmen and their craftsmanship is fucking superior. Right. You know, um, so that's going to be pretty neat. I know a couple of real Italians that are going to float over too. Right. Um, we got a couple that come from uh, <coughs> I think it's Finland. Um, there's a whole bunch of Canadians that come down. Mm -hmm. um, there's an awful lot of people in America that are coming. Right. So all, they all say. So we'll see. Right. Right. You know, there's um, there is a good amount of people. So it's it's like okay. Right. It's great. You know, you'll see some new stuff. You see maybe one or two new bikes that you haven't seen. You'll see a bunch of new parts. You know, we're gonna run a deal that day. Maybe 25 percent off on all the hard parts. Cool. Something like that. Dude, sell out all those fucking knives. Well, the knives are like a bonus. Sell them out. Sell them out. Come buy some shit. Yeah, they buy some shit, you know. We'll have, uh, shit. I think you got 34 vendors, you know, so. 34 vendors. Yeah, yeah. I haven't figured out how that's going to work. Dude, that's crazy. It's going to be a lot. Usually there's, what, 10, 12? I think something. About? A lot of people 15. want to come out. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Holy <clears throat> fuck. So vendors will be on both sides of the street, around the block, and, and then on 14th. There'll cool. be a couple. There'll be um, a couple in the lot that want to be in the lot. But I know pretty much every podcast in the world is coming here. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you doing any more people could look out for? Um, a guy actually asked me today. I don't oh. know what the name of it. Oh, he's doing a documentary. Oh, okay. On a bunch of bike shops or something. Okay. So, um, I don't know. I try not to say no to many things. Right. So it's like if somebody pops up and says, hey, let's, you know, get five minutes, 20 minutes. It's All great. Right. You know? I mean, just like uh, my son's foundation, I, I'm happy with the awareness. It's not like a money thing. Right. Of course, I like to raise money because to raise money... It, it gets a bigger message around the world, right? Right. So that's one lane that I happen to got one part of my body heavily in. The other part of my body goes heavily towards Indian Larry and trying to do what, what I think is right. Right. Having known the guy and what was, you know, in store and stuff that he'd done and stuff that it, we talked about. And, you know, I'm trying to stay on that path of what, what I think is right. Right. Doesn't mean I need to listen to you or the next guy as to what they think is right. Right. You know, somehow juggling to keep this place open for the amount of time that I've been one of the people in it has been uh, something else. Yeah, it is really incredible, like what you've done to keep this brand alive. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Well, know, I don't like, I don't think along those lines. I just think like, how does the door stay open? Right. I don't think of like, can I be impressive? Can this be the way? Could this be the path? Like we could have gone the direction of the Walmarts and right. TV shows, but um, you know, I offend people sometimes. They can't take straight talk and uh, I don't care, you know? And if we go into like a store and we sell and we clean house, that's great. Right. But that'll be gone in like just as quick as we get in there. So. Right. I'd rather we stick around, we make a little bit, you know. Sometimes our stuff costs more, and if you can't get it, it's okay. We only make a small number, and there's a lot of people out there. Yeah, I'm surprised, <clears> man, <throat> um, that you say that, because uh, the cancel culture people would love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can go <laughs> fuck their moms, those people. I, you know, 
This is why I don't watch the news or really get down and get heavy with it because everybody wants to cry like they could change. <laughs> right. They right. can't change nothing. Man. Right, right. Listen, I, great. I love the trannies. I love right. real trannies. <laughs> I don't like these ones that make believe. And, um, you know, you want to change your sex? Okay, great. I, you right. probably weren't going to be somebody I'd have sex with anyhow. Right. You know? <laughs> So it it's a good way to look at it. It doesn't really matter. Right, no, right. look, well, I'm concerned with what right. am I going to do today? Right. I'm going to have a good meal in a little bit. I'm going to have a little more coffee. Yeah. And um, I'm going to climb in the machine and fucking clean it. Right, Then right. I'm going to sweep the shop. And then I'll clean the two bathrooms. Right. You know what I mean? That's what my Wednesday night's going to consist of. And if I'm lucky, maybe I'll go get some ice cream to, or, you know, there's a fantastic gelato place. Just overheated. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's uh let's wrap that that thing up, man. Go get your gelato. You know. It's good. Thanks so we much. We did our thing. Um, Hopefully, this isn't if super nobody, clear. It's okay. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Um, if it is, I don't care. Don't no, 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 no. Definitely. Uh, I mean, you are kind of on a fashion rack. You're halfway there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not half a fag. I'm just right. the half that yeah. doesn't suck dick. That's, yeah. That's yeah. the kind of fag I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be another good addition to the New India Larry shirts. A little, uh, a little bit at the bottom. Tight you know? and white. That's yeah. it. Um, it's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, it? basically, normally I'd be like, I'll tell people where to reach you. But like, yeah, first they, off, halfway, who cares? Who cares? Second off, where the fuck are you living if you don't know <clears> the Larry If you haven't heard of the name before, then that's, yeah. it's okay. It's like, you're probably not going to. We're, we're not going to fucking <laughs> kill ourselves because right. you haven't heard of us. Right. Or, you know, the people that come out and go, hey. I didn't think you guys were still open. Right. Oh, well. Um, oh, uh, last also listener question. We'll end on this one. Who eats more snacks, you or uh, Buster? Oh, we're a team. Team, uh, we're team, team effort. We're a team. Okay. Yeah. All right. You've seen before. He got a pepperoni a slice before. Pizza. He yeah. got a pepperoni slice with honey and so did I. Dude, I was actually surprised uh, how much pizza you gave him. Like, I'm not that generous with my fucking dogs. Nah, but listen, this like, dog will do anything this dog lays down next to me this motherfucker is going to be sleeping you know ass to ass on the bed we don't is sleep it, um, but to, you know to not we don't do that configuration that you guys no, sleep no or no is it we got a method uh, a spoon it's a complete cheek to cheeks okay yeah 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 okay See, fucking like an angry man. we're two couple. males we're two males but, you right. know we're in New York City. You could spoon like that. You can. You could do anything in New York City. Fuck, right. you should be able to do anything in this world if you're not insecure. Right, right, right. The sad right. part is the majority right. are. I've spooned my male dogs. Yeah, yeah. Know. That's on you. That's yeah. not, I'm not into that shit. No. All right, man. My dog's got balls, man. He's yeah. got balls. They, <laughs> he does, they, dude. They're they still cut hanging. off. Of course they are. He's they're a male. Proud. Fuck yeah. He's real. He's yeah. not a fucking gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> um. That's it. Yeah, Wrap dude, we're done. we're done. Um, we'll see you guys at the block party. If not, fuck you. <clears throat> That's right. All right. Thanks so much for your time, Bobby. Thank you.